the game, which uh, I think is warming up this tournament, and you can tell from the opening. Hikaru with white starts with e4, and often this leads to the most I exciting openings, especially if black plays c5. As uh, probably as Neil's the done. sharpest sort of reply to e4 if white plays the open Sicilian. G6, the perk, is the other sharp choice. Knight to F3, a D6, and Hikaru goes for the open Sicilian with D4. Yeah. Um, of course, there are a number of other options, but D4 is the most popular move. It's the main line, uh, and it leads to the most interesting positions. Crazy counter-attacking games in general. Mm -hmm. So black takes on D4, knight takes, knight to F6, attacking the pawn here, so it needs to be defended. <coughs> and the reason black plays the knight here is, I used to play a system with e6, but then I found out white has the very good move c4 here, and I don't like these positions where white gets this kind of bind on the position. So knight to f6 played, knight to c3, and now the most popular Sicilian, uh, the knight, knight of, of, yes, with a6. And of course here, there's a, a number of ways that white can play. I mean, uh, h3 is kind of the trendy move that's yeah. for the last couple of years, trying to go g4 and bishop g2. But this has been well analyzed. And the line that Hikaru plays is really the most, well, I'd say the most aggressive move is bishop g5. Yeah, right. Uh, but the second most aggressive move is the move Hikaru plays, bishop to e3, and the so-called like English attack, really, I think it's called mm -hmm. in there. This is, this is a system that white can play against most Sicilians. Yeah. Um, White's next moves basically are queen d2, f3, castles queenside, and then start pushing the kingside pawns. Right. And black has a decision to make now. Now, um, there's two scores of thoughts here. e5 is probably more main line, um, and this is, is a move that's probably more popular. The move, I, I've played this as black quite, quite a fair few times when I know my opponent goes bishop e3, because yes. I, I just love the excitement you get yeah. from these positions, and you know you're going to get tactical slugfight, loads of attack, it's just so exciting. So I find them very stressful. I love that stress, <laughs> <laughs> so I just really enjoy There's playing them. There's a pressure here though, you have to, you, you, you have do. to do, you know, you have to continue aggressively, and this kind of demands a lot of energy, and as white, you know, you never have full, complete control over the position, yep. and there's always that counter-attack. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing. Yeah, we'll have to get our tactical caps on. Certainly, with, for this game. Definitely, uh, uh, the move that Niels plays is the move that I prefer, um, and that is the move e6. e6. This is a more flexible move because you're, you're not committing to a, what, a static pawn structure, which you were when you're putting the pawn on e5. You're leaving options of d5, e5 later. Very, very flexible. And this was favored, this set up by Kasparov. Kasparov won some yeah. amazing games in this, e6. And then Topalov. Topalov actually beat his great friend Kramnik in 17 moves. 17 moves with this e6. And um, it's, it's just really exciting, this stuff. Okay. I love it. Let's f3. Let's, uh, let's catch up on the f3. Sure. B5, black has to push here, white pushes over here. Queen D2. And now you don't have to play the next move. If you're black, you can just continue developing or develop. You haven't really done much developing. But B4 is um, one idea that actually, I think this is following to pile off uh, Kramnik with the white pieces against to pile off. And I, I think this move B4 was used mm -hmm. to great effect. And it just, again, forces the knight offside. And here, black now plays knight b d7. And well, already I just looks so, so much fun. Okay. I mean, if you take here, there's a d5, d5 move. Yeah. Um, and well, you know, I hope both players are well prepared here. So, uh, you know, white now castles into it. So, uh, yeah. uh, well, this is all preparation, as you can all see. Yeah. Nakamura is just simply blitzing out the moves, and he's got more time than he started off. With. Yeah. And I think Niels must have uh, been prepared for this because I think uh, Hikaru has played this system numerous right. times before. I think he beat Fabiano uh, Caruana in, in sort of the American Championships last year, maybe with this. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, well, a, a very similar position anyway in a Sicilian. Queen a5, and now 
this knight is an issue, you, you have played b3, and you don't really want to play b3, no. because you don't really want to move pawns in front of your king, because y well, you weaken squares in Right, general. exactly, and I, I was taught that, you know, a2, b2, and c2, keeping the pawns all in one line, that's the perfect defensive structure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, b3 agree. is not that great. No. But okay. Uh, and now, bishop b7, and here, this is still theory, and this is old Kasparov, uh, analysis from I think the 1990s this line where white now well if, if black is allowed to just develop it seems like black has already achieved quite a great deal mm -hmm. over here like rook c8 and even this knight can come in trying to get rid of the knight on a4 and the queen you know black's doing quite well in this attack already yeah. white hasn't got marching up on the king's side so a3 grabbing a pawn I I is yep. really the, the main test okay and this pawn is now pinned if you go d5, um, I mean, I, have, I can't remember the theory, but this is not the main move, d5, for some reason. I mean, that pawn just can't move. That, that's the point. That pawn can't move. Uh, I can't remember what White is supposed to play here, but Neil's obviously done his homework, and he now sacrifices the pawn with queen c7. <coughs> White takes on b4. And now you're moved. And now d5. d5. So this move to try to release the bishop. And it's also threatening e5. Well, it might not be possible. Potential some e6, e5s, yeah. followed by d yeah. d5, Very d4. Very interesting. And after, OK, bishop f2 has been played uh, in the position. And well, I mean, we could have a quick, as this is the current position, quick assessment of what we think is going on here. I mean, you know, sacrificing a pawn when, on when you're going to cast on opposite sides of the boards is very normal. So. I really wouldn't worry about being a pawn down here as black because, you know, it's very unlikely these positions ever get to yeah. an ending. They do sometimes, but it's, it's quite a rare occurrence. So don't worry about your pawn, I think, you know. No, no, I wouldn't worry about that. Also, black, um, black has got the hook. He's uh, one step closer because normally when you cast on opposite sides <coughs> of the board, you are looking at establishing some kind of hook, which means it's, it's a way for one side to open up the, 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 a line for the pieces. And so here, as you can see, the hook is there, as uh, Simon's nicely highlighted, on b4, which means that white, in order for to open up a line, black will simply <coughs> just go a6, a5, and uh, that's the line opened, yeah, potentially. Some, some targets. I mean, yeah. white, white's pawn structure is a little bit unstable. It is definitely so unstable when you have an open c line. So, honestly, this is in the, the realms of theory. Yeah. So this is sharp things. This Very sharp not stuff. not quite my chess style. <laughs> I love, I, I mean, I absolutely love these positions, um, you know, they're, they're just so exciting. Um, yeah, to watch, to watch. To watch, and, I, to, I, and to play, I mean, I, you know, it's like, I like going on roller coasters. I would Do be you? trembling with nerves here. But that's I half the fun, that's half the fun. Let's no, get that, let's get I, that I, I'm kind of more and more like, keep it calm, keep it a nice, good structure, yeah. nice solid, and then start pushing <laughs> with control. So, yeah, with control, it, you know. Yeah, it is a matter of taste, and I think both of these these players, uh, <coughs> you know, Nakamura and, and Niels, the the, the red-blooded crazy males, aren't they? And they, they love this kind of stuff. Yeah. So, um, I mean, okay, the, the question here, Bishop F2 being played, and maybe this is a, um, a move that's, I don't know, get just prepared. I don't know if black can take it. Um, you know, possibly this, this move is playable, but you also have to be careful about your own king. Exactly. I mean, this hasn't castled yet. I, I wouldn't want to take that. I wouldn't that. touch that. Not until I've castled king side. <sighs> but if you can take it. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, this, this position isn't about material. It's about... But it's more... I, I'm, I think I'm more doing this to just try to get this square. I mean, I want to just get a knight here and attack here. It's, I, I, I agree it's not about the pawn. I just want to get d5 with my knight. But... Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's Let's <laughs> complicated stuff. Shall we move on yeah. to board two? Well, we have uh, yes. Duda, aka the dude, the versus dude. The Gladura. Dude. The dude abides. The du <laughs> also a very similar name. The Duda. The dude. That's, that's it. Anyway, oh. well, two very, both very young players. We yes. have, uh, I think, Duda is 19 and Gladura is mm, not, not around that age, not far off, yeah. yeah. Uh, let, let's whiz through this one because it, it's a rule Lopez, bishop b5, and well, uh, knight to f6 was, it was very interesting, um, this, this computer match recently with alpha zero, um, because alpha zero basically worked out what the best openings were, and it came to the conclusion that actually the Berlin was knight to f6, that, you know, that 
after doing his opening report, the French started higher, then it got worse. Same with the Karakhan, <laughs> and it came. The computer came to the decision that Knight 206 yeah. is actually the best move, um, and that's actually been. You know, it didn't have any other resources of working out for itself, and that's kind of been shown in chess nowadays, which I found quite yeah. fascinating, that report. But, of course, um, this old Raul Lopez stuff it dates back centuries, thousands of years, maybe. Um, thousands? Centuries, I'll go for. Yeah, thousands centuries. Of pushing it. Yeah. And now the marshal is with D5. Uh, do you have to get these positions? You do I get these positions? Um, no. Um, I don't either. I don't play this with white or black. Lots of minor... Well, I did try to play them a long time ago, but I found it is actually very... The not so much space. This is one of the things that you have to kind of get your, ha your head around. Not <coughs> so much space. Both sides don't have, apart from easily, five, uh, five pawns. They haven't really marked out their space. There's a lot of manoeuvring going on. And with all four minor pieces on the board, it's quite tricky. So, I mean, it's very difficult. Sometimes you go A4, sometimes you could you play for d3, move the knight to d2, and knight f1, and fiddle around with the knights a bit, and then uh, all I know is that white's big plan is to play d4, but when black is not ready. Yeah. You have so to catch him on the wrong foot. Yeah, I mean, again, you don't. I know you don't have to play h3 here. You, you can play d4 here, but... Yeah, but it get you. Ca what happens is that black goes bishop g4 and you have to take that decision in the centre yeah. and you really want to maintain it you don't really want to be pushing with d4 d5 right. so quickly or you don't really want to go d takes e5 because mm -hmm. black is ready for it so that's what I mean about catching them on the wrong foot I agree I mean it's yeah we've mentioned this many times about keeping attention haven't we? Mm. you know the top players when you watch them play uh, and again we, we like picking out the difference between the top players and lower amateurs because I think Amateurs can bear in mind what they're doing wrong, and amateurs will tend to play a move like d5 here, which is actually a line. But just in general, they want to relieve the tension quickly. Top players will try to keep as much tension as they can right. because they think it will give them more options, and they have the decision and they're, they're benefit from when they make the decision more later on. But okay, the move played in the game is, is very normal. And so he went h3. He says he took yeah. some precautionary measure there. It's yeah, controlling this one, and now the bishop decides to go the other way because we can't stand that diagonal. D4 played, and now rook to e1. Now, you know, knight to g5 is is one line which people have used to get a draw, you know, this kind of stuff, but... Um, no, I don't, yeah. It's, it's been used, it's a tip, but not here, no. No. Definitely not. So we have knight bd2. Yvanka pointed out this manoeuvre, the knight coming to f1 and slowly trying to get to f5. That's one of the ideal yeah. squares. So pawn takes d4, pawn takes d4, knight d7. And this is a line, this move, that's become popular about two years ago, mainly by Fiddler. Okay. Uh, they started to play this this sort of line, I think. And uh, I've always thought it to be a bit dubious. The position will, will shortly resemble a Benoni. Um, right. Because the knight goes to f1, why not? Yes. And now the point of this move is so the bishop can come to f6 and black is trying to sort of hit the center with his pieces. Um, let's see, so knight a5. The light square bishop is, is a great piece for white to You've have. Got to, yeah, you, you don't want to exchange off the light square bishop. So bishop c2, yeah. maintaining that bishop. And now bishop f6. So black is starting to target the pawns in the center. but. I love having these pawns I I in the centre of the board. Personally, I, I, I think it gives you great, great control of all areas of the okay. board. And now uh, rook b1 is played, so sort of sidestepping uh, the bishop's uh, diagonal. And here we have c5. We have now, yeah. now black has made his move. Yeah. White needs to take a decision. I personally would play d5. Yes, d5. I d5. Mean, and because now the time has come that I have to do something and when the bishop is on b7 makes it way more attractive for me to lock it out. That's right and the bishop here is of course locked in by the pawn on d5 and this does resemble now uh, queen's pawn opening so right. it's kind of transferred hasn't it right. from e4 to d4 and knight c4 played and we have one more move knight to h2 so the knight is wriggling its way into a more attacking and aggressive position. You can see the two players there on the camera. You can see they're both quite young and um, 
white is now thinking about, well, it should be black's move, but um, it's a good camera angle we have there. Yep. So very quickly, <coughs> um, we're going to have an update <coughs> on, um, let's see, where should we go? If we can find Nigel's game, maybe we'll have a look at Nigel's game, shall yeah, we? Yeah, well, we should, shouldn't we? Yeah, I don't know if it, I can find it on the list at the moment. So let's have a look very quickly at David Howe. Um, Definitely, yeah. And, well, not many moves played here, Yvanka. So no. only five moves played. And David Howell uh, on three out of three and Antipov on three out of three. And so remember, Antipov had this fantastic game yesterday <coughs> with the white pieces did, against yeah. Stefanova where he just yeah. checkmated her. Yes, very, very nicely. Her king right yeah. on the middle of the board. Yeah. So we have um, knight to of six. David, the only English player on three out of three at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I don't think any British player has won in Gibraltar since 2012. That would have been Nigel. Nigel, it I would think, have been would have Nigel been the Schultz. only... Yeah, yeah. Maybe Michael Adams as well has won. But yeah, I, I, has, I remember yeah. for a long time this was yeah. Nigel, Torn Nigel Short's you, you, tournament. He always performed exceptionally, exceptionally here. Exceptionally well, so, yeah. yeah. And, um, well, maybe David Howe's the biggest hope um, for the English supporters. And he's played at Grunfeld. And, like we say, knight to c3, d5. And now a bit of a sideline. Queen to a four check, bishop d7. And, whoa, what's, what's that all about? <laughs> I don't understand that at all. Can you, well, the queen goes out and goes back? That looks crazy. Is that a draw offer? Do That's you think so? I, I mean, you, is, is it tempting for you to put the bishop back now? The bishop on d7 back to c8. Well, if I just to see, just to see yeah. what he's out, well, what he's what, what what's white, white's trying to do. Yeah, exactly. It's a very strange. Cause it's it's sometimes it's a good idea know. to repeat. It's just to see yeah. their mindset, not necessarily <coughs> to take a draw, because I don't think yeah. I don't think David will be very happy yeah. with a draw. Yeah. No, no. I, I, I think David will go for the win. But what a weird idea! You move the queen backwards and forwards, and of course, if you repeat the position three times, the you know the game becomes a draw. Uh, I, I mean, m maybe that's just confused David a lot. <laughs> maybe, sure. maybe, maybe, maybe. So. But also, you have to remember that the players just c they can't agree a draw. No, in this in this can't. tournament, they can't agree a dr draw before move thirty. They have to fight. So uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to now take a short break. Um, so we'll be back very shortly with a very important guest. So see you in a sec. White play queen a four check which was met by bishop d7, and then white came back saying, mm, maybe a draw, maybe. And black says, no, mm, maybe. Maybe, 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 maybe I'll change my mind in a minute. And then white says, no, no. I'm playing for a win. So do you reckon that, that's a bit of an out psych there? Well, psych? well, well, well in yeah. especially in light of this next move, actually, so black yes. simply goes bishop g7, and then, boom. Harry, <laughs> Harry, <laughs> Push Harry. that h pawn. And yes. I'm going to come at you on the flank. Yes. Well, it, it, I, I, definitely a change in mentality, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this, this is my main system against the Grunfield. When, when I face the Grunfield, I nearly always play h4. I used to play it in uh, this position, h4. Um, but then it was found that c5 is a very good response. The point being, if you take on c5, d4 is, is most annoying. So the point of playing it in the move order been played is that the same possibility is now not available because if you play c5 I can now just take here and you don't have d4 because I have an extra piece controlling that square so it makes it impossible. Now you may be wondering what, why, what's the point behind this h4 move? Well let's say black castled or, or you know for example we just go h5 and it's really as simple as that. You're trying to open up a, a, a file to attack on and if the knight takes on h5 black loses control of the center, as well as giving this avenue to attack, so white can simply recapture here, and, yeah. and white gets a very pleasant, well, much better position. So the main move uh, is c6. Now, I think I might have had this against David Howe before, um, and I now go into an exchange slav, because um, you know, I don't want to learn <laughs> any theory, and I, the reason I do this is I, I'm trying to say the bishop on g7 it, is not particularly well placed here. Also, my pawn on h4 probably must be back on h2 in these positions because g4 is a bit weak. Um, maybe white can claim some small edge, but uh, Antipov pl has played a very aggressive move I'm not aware of. Now, uh, again, we talked about Grischuk and Carlsen. They're, they are actually, they often have very interesting opening battles, and the first time I can recall this being played was Grischuk against Carlsen, Carlsen with black, and Grischuk playing bishop to g5 here trying to just put a little bit of pressure on the centre inadvertently. 
So bishop f4 is, I think, a new move. I, I don't know, it's probably not a new move, but it's a rare move, and it is yeah. a pawn sacrifice. Um, it does seem a little bit odd. It does. You, you should be able to take on c4. David, very principal player, does take that and one. And then follow that up with some form of knight d5, maybe, or b5. Yeah, these two hold on. Yeah, uh, I totally agree. Um, I mean, I, I love sacrificing pawns. Uh, I mean, it give me a chance to get some compensation, I'll sacrifice pawn, but I have given up these kind of sacrifices because I don't have a lot of belief <laughs> in them. Um, so I, I'm interested to see what White's follow-up is. I mean, often you continue with e4. Okay. That, that's a standard way. You, you're saying, okay, I've given up pawn, but I've taken the center. But then, you know, b5. b5 will and follow. And certainly. Uh, and, well, you know, you can go queen d2, but I, I, I have my doubts that this is enough compensation. I'm very interested to see where white is going to try to get compensation from here. Um, I, because you're pawn, you're pawn you're down. down it's yeah. simple, you're pawn down. And you you've also got h4 as yeah. well, which gives up some squares. Yes. I'm thinking, G4. I'm looking at you, g4, yeah, yeah. right. Uh, I mean, so, uh, I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued about this. I mean, in mm. uh, I want... I'm biased, David's English and he's our friend, I want him to win. But I also want White to prove some compensation, so I've got a new opening I can play. You know? yeah. So the one good thing about doing commentary is occasionally we learn something, you know, uh, occasionally. One good thing. Well, occasionally, a little bit, yeah. now and again. So, so I'm interested in that one, but a very interesting yeah. dynamic start to this game. I would love to like, can we check out MVL versus Bacchusvili? Well, sure, and we now have um, the Raul Lopez. Um, and we have the d6 variation, which is quite a rare move. Is it the Morphe defense, something like that? Steinitz? Steinitz. 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 And now c3 in order to Break say, right. D4. Yeah. Bishop d7 breaking the pin, d4, and now g6. And th in the rule Lopez, the bishop is often best placed on g7. And they often come back to f8 and then here. So black is going for the ideal setup. But black, black has allowed white to do moves that white often isn't able to play in the center of d4. So it's kind of a trade-off. And bishop g5 is certainly the most testing move of, of this setup because it forces yeah. a, con a concession fr from black. And the concession is f6 here, which looks on the surface really ugly. The bishop just comes back, and now knight to h6, trying to come maybe here or to f7 more likely. Bishop to b3 that that pawn on f6 doesn't want to be there because how can you castle now? Well, bishop g7, a4, bit of, bit of space game, queen e7, and I'm assuming this... It I, does look like... That'd be great, but it, it's, it's a feint. It I'll, is a feint, okay. I'll, after here, uh, knight to b8. Knight e6, maybe knight f7. Knight f7, yeah. And then castles king side. But if you put if you put the d8 knight on f7, you have this situation with those two knights yeah. on the Yeah. There's a there's a word for it. What's it? Disintent oh, this got a Stupid vague. knights. Stupid knights, yeah, that's the They get in the way of each no, other. No, but there's a really long word that they all tell me of. That's that's my technical term. Extenuated or I don't know, yeah. anyway. I don't know any long words. Uh, I can only do, I get to about eight letters and I sort of, yeah, you know, you're just I, I struggle after that. Right, so, yeah. um, and hello to everyone we should mention in the Twitch chat. So twitch.tv chess, hello to you. And hello to Panzerka. And hello to Sela Bethel, who, who's been here most days. And also to Five Card Draw and anyone else. And remember, you, you can subscribe to the Twitch channel, twitch.tv chess channel, um, a way to support us doing these streams. and. Um, you know, uh, and, and generally to support chess. So do subscribe to the channel. We will notice you more because you get these sort of, uh, how do you call them, emotes next to your name. So you'll stand out more. Uh, that's one oh, right. advantage. And, of and it's very it. colorful on the Twitch stream. However, you can also tweet us. You can reach us on Twitter using the hashtag yep. chess. Uh -huh. And we will try and read them out and we will try and answer them. Oh, that, that is, I have to say, the only word that I know past eight letters, which is my favorite word I in the yeah. English language is, and someone here, and that chick uh, knows, knows me too well, it is discombobu discombobulate. <laughs> discombobulate, uh, yeah. I love that word, and like you could say, black's position is a little bit discombobulated here. Right. Just, yeah. just to prove I can occasionally do a bit more than eight letters, but I love that word. It's got some lovely, lovely sound to it. 
Um, yes. This could probably late. So, um, well, I guess, yeah, like you say, Black is just trying to get Castle Kingside and maybe mm. then play F5. F5 and, and if Black can get those moves in, Black should be fine. But at the moment, Black is still a couple of moves away from yeah, being able to well range Yeah, we're up. still in opening, yeah. the opening stage, and we need to yes. see how it all goes. Okay. Yes. So, oh. okay. And um, we have uh, Aronian played the marshal as black well, against we can go the next game. So let, let's have a look at Aronian, definitely. <laughs> and here we are, and well, um, the marshal, we mentioned before, we get to the position where you dive into the marshal, is the position after C3. Yeah. And here, in actual fact, white in this position is avoiding C3, which has for a long time been the main move because of the marshal. Like, for example, A4 is an anti martial line. Uh, the point being, after C3, really the critical test uh, is the martial. And theoretically speaking, um, I think top players <coughs> basically think this is a draw. Um, it's it been analysed so deeply. But, of course, that, that is if you know 40 moves of theory, because you really have to. This is one of those lines you have to basically spend your lifetime just looking at I mean, right. it was very interesting. We had Peter Lecco on uh, the stream in the Isle of Man. He's a well-known uh, theoretician, and um, he, he's 2,700 plus, great, respected player. And he was talking about one certain position in the marshal, and he said he had 600 pages of notes on one position that occurred on move 20. And I was like, that's no way to spend a life, Peter. That's, but that's <laughs> crazy. Uh, you have to be willing to do that, though, if you're going to play this. So, right. Yeah. But, you know, most o in fairness to the marshal, most openings, yeah. most black openings against E4 will have that one long line that you have yeah. to... I mean, the Cairo Khan, it's the main line where you have like yes. 20 something moves of theory, and then, then you start playing, and then you show your understanding. Yeah. But uh, it is a little bit of a... Yeah. I do wonder whether Levon is a bit hampered by the candidates. Yeah, does he want to show his does theory he, does in he the want marshal? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I mean mm -hmm. or does he want to show his theory Th this in the main line? I totally agree. Totally so agree. therefore he's forced to do something that he perhaps wouldn't. And, and we're getting some uh, <laughs> interesting <laughs> knowledge from one of our producers here. And, and apparently, you know, chess opening books I mean, I don't, I don't think I'd want to play this position as white or black because, you know, I, I don't I, I want to be able to sort of go down the pub occasionally and have time to eat dinner or something because yeah. your life will be, bom you know, bombarded by learning this. And there was one line in the book which had sort of the variation A1123, you know, something like that. It just was ridiculous. Right, it, was like it was like the crazy. 50th line in a position you had to, 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 uh, had to uh, learn. Um, and... Um, okay, well, uh, this is a, a quote that Aronian actually made with Black once was, uh, very interestingly, if I want to draw, I play the Marshal, which is a pawn sack line involving very <laughs> dynamic play. If I want to win, I play the Berlin. Uh, and that's what it's like at top level chess. Yeah. Thank goodness I like well, it. Interesting in interestingly enough, guess who I saw on my hike today up the rock? Aronian? Aronian. Okay. And uh, we said, why don't you join us? He said, no. No. And off he ran. Oh, he literally you. ran up the rock. Re what? He really? Right. Yeah. Really? Wow. That's a long no. way to run. So, so maybe, so maybe he was just. Yes. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, maybe he didn't. We <laughs> obviously didn't have much time to prepare then. <laughs> yeah. um, right. uh, just <laughs> lay out some false draw. Yeah. I very much doubt that. But Let's uh, have a look. Because okay, this is the marshal where White takes this pawn here, but um, this should be seven. But Black now prepares to get the bishops pointing towards white's king. It should be clear to see where black's compensation is here with all the white's pieces just hovering over on the queen side. D4, bishop F. well this, this is slightly odd. I mean, isn't C6 the main move? I, I'm not an expert in this, I don't. It is, C6 is the main move, yeah, C6, and then you yeah. go bishop D6. Yeah, so your bishop points at a, a juicy H2 point. Yeah. May, maybe C6 is the lines where you're more likely to get a draw uh, and... Yeah, that, that's, that's all. Yeah. So, okay, maybe he's mixing it up then. I think Aron is playing, uh, yeah, I, I agree, uh, a line... I mean, the bishop is clearly not as good on this square as it would be on d6, but black star still has good development. So let's look, bishop d2, and now black is getting his last piece into the game. 
Mm. So maybe if you're, you're looking a way to play the marshal uh, and you want to avoid a lot of the theory, maybe, maybe this is one of those lines, side lines which could still give Black good conversation. Veronian's playing, it's obviously not too bad. Yeah. Knight to a3, uh, rook to e8, queen f1, and now knight, knight e7. e7. I mean, that is not a move. That's deep, isn't it? <laughs> it's <laughs> too deep for me. Uh, um, ooh, why? 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 Why are you putting the knight back there from a, a nice central square? Where's that going? Where's that piece going? Uh, is um, it going to here? I thought c5 could be the threat. C5. It's uh, not really much okay. of a threat, but you know. maybe c5 is, is one idea. Yeah, to, to x-ray. Um, and then, but then white will simply move the bishop. The bishop, maybe, maybe and then mm. he will go knight d5 and go ha ha. Yeah. Resting. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I, I very much doubt that. I mean, I suppose the knight does get there. It's yeah, a okay, knight f, knight f, or, or g6 to that square okay. as well. Um, but it's going to if I go bishop f4. Bishop f4. Okay, so I will, I will now gain the tempo and get my knight out of the way. Bishop g6. And, and you know, of course, I'm going to play this move here no, without any, do any, any, any do thought it. whatsoever. Don't do it. <laughs> you know, and just just throw Harry at you and really? try to, try to create some chaos. Well, I don't mean, I'm, a, I'm going to try. Go there. H3. H3, okay. I'm going to keep um, coming, maybe, with H4. Bishop H2. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what I'm doing after that. Uh, intriguing. Yeah, yeah, I quite like you putting your bishop here. It's a nice yeah. idea, Manka, because it's, it's an extra piece around the king to defend it, and it's actually a good diagonal. It covers the F4 square. Um, well, it also covers the knight H4. You know, I really yeah. don't want that happening. No, you don't. I don't want that in my... I don't want to even consider such a move. No. And can... I mean, black could try stuff with queen here and knight to f4 to get the two bishops or knight to h4 straight away, but uh, I don't know. Rookie one. Rookie one. I stop swapping pieces or bishop c2. Stop swapping... Yeah, I Knight c2 as well. I mean, but rookie one I like yeah. just to... Yeah, rookie one I like. Swap, rookie swap one, them off. Swap them off and then yeah. knight c2 and... Yeah. I will start to... Yeah play with that extra pawn. Yes, and um, it's, it's interesting because obviously this is preparation. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no doubt about it. Move 17, 97 is Lev's prep. Uh, maybe a novelty, I'm guessing it, it probably is. Um, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. I suppose the knight could also come to d6. We'll see, we'll see with that one. Okay. Uh, should we check out on the, um, the next game, which is uh, there are two Argentinians playing in the next two boards. So we have Peralta, front, uh, he's facing off against Le Quang Lim, and we also have a young, very young Argentinian, Alan Pichot, playing against Mickey. So you want to go to Mickey's? Should we go to Mickey's Let's game? go to Mickey's. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, 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 um. Down. Down, down, down. Down do, there, do, yes. Do, do, do. Okay, so Mickey's white, and, and very quickly, just in the opening, um, I, I know quite a lot actually so I'd, I'd quite like to show this because I, I had this once this bishop b5 as black against mickey this position i had against mickey in the british championships round nine or something and you know playing mickey with black is, is never no. very you, you, you know but if i did win i'd be leading the british at the time and i was kicking myself afterwards because i had this position uh a6 this is all main line the bishop tucks away here and now I played the move that, that Black played here, and I was quite nervous about playing it. I totally forgot what I prepared <laughs> in the morning. I only spent 10 minutes looking at this, but I had prepared a really interesting line, which I think would have given me winning chances against Mickey, because against Mickey, you've got to mess things up. Yeah. You've got to complicate. Uh, he, you know, he's still brilliant in complications, but uh, your only chance, the way I saw it, I don't want to go in some quiet maneuvering game. And the line I found, which I had against young Ravi in, in the Blitz yesterday, was e5. If you go h3. And if you go h3, then the line I prepared was g5. g5. I thought mm. uh, I knew you, you were going to say gonna that. that. I knew so, yeah. that. But at the time, this would have been a novelty, and I had prepared it. And I think, you know, uh, maybe I'd have lost still. But against Mickey, some madness like this is exactly the way, way to take him on. And the point is that the knight takes it, you go rook g8. And if the knight comes back, probably shouldn't do d4 is better you take on h3 and you try to castle queen side and, and at least here any results possible right. um so this is quite interesting the e5 move and the other point is if d4 you just take and now you've got the g4 square so you go here 
and this puts a lot of pressure on d4. If here the knight yeah. comes in here, and again this position is also incredibly dangerous for for white. So I was kicking myself afterwards. I haven't played this. I played what happened in the game, bishop g4, and I got absolutely, tr you know, I, I went bishop back, and he had some theoretical novelty, and I, I he played very well and beat me. And this setup that black plays is a lot more solid. Um, and obviously something I think Mickey would relish is a position like this right. where he can just manoeuvre in a mm -hmm. very slow but secure style. Now he's getting a King's Indian attack position and you know, it's, it's a Mickey kind of Mickey this position. This is definitely Mickey's yeah. slightly better. Yeah. A bit um, more space. A bit more space. He can attack as mm. well. So, uh, I mean, uh, okay, Black is obviously going to try to do something. Um, they can probably be counted quite easily. Can Black kind of claim a moral victory? Well, you know, he's got that bishop that usually lies there on C8 is gone. Uh -huh. Does that make a difference? Yeah, can, yeah. can we say that? Yeah, I guess so. As yeah, a kind of some form off. of compensation. And yeah. this bishop on G2 is yeah. not so... Yeah, not, not, not so great. Not so great. It wants to be in a no. different diagonal. So I, I, don't, I don't know, but my feeling is that Mickey will be a... Happy. Happy. I mean, okay, if I was yeah. white here, I'd just want to go knight f3, g4, f5, and here it comes. That, you know, it's like yeah. such a simple plan to it's play. It's kind of my chess as well. So. Simple and good. <laughs> so, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like it. I, Push I, I, those little pawns forward. Yeah. Do some damage. Yeah. yeah. Should we look at the other one? Uh, should we look Peralta? at the Peralta, Peralta okay. Lay versus Lay. Should we just do current position here? Yeah, we should do current yeah. position, yeah. We've got a lot of things to catch up on, and... Uh, it is now white to move and uh, it's equal material. White has the two bishops, bishop here, very good piece. But whose pawn in the center is weaker? Is it this one or is it this one? Um, they're both a little little bit weak. Um, I mean, if you did a snap judgment here, you, you don't care who, who would white. you? I, I like, yeah, I agree. Uh, just because of, yeah. um, not to do with the pawns or anything, it's just the bishop pair. Bishop pair, the bishop yeah. pair. But then on the same time, I have weakened with f2, f3, which is really not annoying. That is always a right. Thing. Yeah, always, always a, a problem. So um, I, I agree. I mean, can, can you? I mean, it'd be nice if we could get the piece over to here, so to to, to f5 um, or something like that. Uh, but okay, pretty pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, now a game between two two younger players, and I think it's sort of passage, you know, right of passage to play in Gibraltar, isn't it? Really. Yeah. You know, if you if you, if you want to be a GM or, or or a name, you've got to play Gibraltar. Really, one of these big opens. And um, I would like to mention that yesterday I, I had great fun. I mean, uh, you know, I have great fun sitting here, of course. So that shows most of the time. No, I'm yeah. joking. I'm all the time, it's great, and you know, I, I love working with Ivanka. And uh, but after after the commentary, uh, every evening here, there's there's a different event, and uh, I actually got a chance to play play some some blitz chess, which was cool. So I played. I in, heard yeah. you had a fantastic. It was a fantastic game. You beat. I beat the guy with white here. I beat Tal yeah. Baron in, in about twenty moves, crushed him. So that was and that was good. And you recorded nice, uh, that. I recorded it as well, <laughs> which you made said, it a little bit. You said to David, David Howell, that is, I record did, this, yeah. record this game, and then you blew him off. Then you just yeah. completely blasted him off the board. The thing is, me, me and Tal, uh, Tal Baron here from from Israel, uh, both have our YouTube channels. Oh right. And uh, I thought it'd be nice for people to see the game and, and to post it up on YouTube afterwards, especially if I win. I thought if I lose, I'll probably lose the video somewhere, but. I won, so it's okay, so I can put it up now. Yeah. And um, it, it, it was a great event. It was six rounds. It was really light-hearted. Um, I was playing with uh, some English guys, Gary Quiller, and, um, Alan Walton, and David Spence. Um, I think the name of the team was, uh, was it, it was something, I can't even remember, Spenny's, I don't know, I can't remember now, I can't remember the name of my team. Um, but it was, I mean, I think I, I played four one now. Six rounds, I think I played four Grandmasters, but... One of the rounds, I, we were sitting there, and I was looking at board two. Gary, Gary was on board two, and he was playing the winner from the joint winner from last year, David yeah. Anton, 
on board too. And I thought, and he won it jointly with Hikari last year. Yeah. And I thought, well, what's he doing? Who am I playing then if he's on board too? And uh, so, but it was just a great fun event. And we have a masterclass tonight, I, I believe. Yeah, we do have a masterclass. Because, yep. I mean, that's the essence of Gibraltar. It's, just, it's not just about the chess tournament. It's also about the social. It's also about having fun afterwards and, you know, establishing this little community. Yes, yes. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, I, it is. And it, and it is really friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, this, yeah. like today, tonight will be a masterclass. Tomorrow it will be that famous Battle of the Sexes. Battle of the Sexes. Where something, yeah. <coughs> something special is going to happen. Something special is happen in round three in the Battle of the Sexes. Yeah. We're not allowed to say what it is. Yeah. Like we don't even know what it is. No. Something interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, let's uh, to let's go current. Let's look at the uh, position. And um, we have this position on the board after 14 moves. C5 uh, just been played. And um, okay, Richard Rapport with black. Again, he'd be pushing to win, but Tal Baron, a very, a very uh, strong player as well. Um, in his own right, except when he plays me, and he plays very badly and loses on camera. For Ready YouTube. for your YouTube video, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did so, you go Houston? Um, <coughs> and I have to say thank <coughs> you to Dave, David in the crowd, who, who, who brought me a point during that game. So that, that's that's I, I have to say that that's the magic. That was a magic mixture. So cheers, Dave. <laughs> so, um, so the position after C5. Uh, well, there's a problem here, and at the moment White's piece is his queen. Is is looking a little bit silly. There, there, there is the back of Tao's head. It's a great name. I, w I wish I was called Tao. Tao Williams. Oh, I mean, uh, what a great name. Like, yeah, definitely. I can't change my name because obviously I, I was given it by my parents, and so this Simon's a great name. But I mean, I Tao. Like Tao is Tao. For me, I like the ones like Oof, the Wolf. Oh, oh, yeah, Tiger is a good one. Tiger's a Tiger's great is one. A bear, you know, yeah. some kind of. Yeah, those are the good names. Bjorn means bear. Yeah, bear, yeah, bear yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Right. Bjorn in the. Uh, but Tao, I mean, Tao oh, is fantastic. He's bound to be a good player, you know. Yeah, he has called to be. Called Tao, doesn't he? Yeah, he has to be. And uh, Baron as well. And Baron, I oh know. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah, but so. I was speaking on surnames. I really like Nils Grand Delius. Yeah, it it's does like sound very grand. And we'll come back to Nils's game after this because that's really exciting. But C five, it looks at the moment that Black should be comfortable. I, I think. But is there any uh, tactics? Tactics. Like knight takes knight, d5. Well, let's go for d5, d5 shall we? Yeah, it yeah. looks like fun because my rook is lined up against the queen, so I can try this. And if you win the pawn here, I want to go knight g5 and try to mate you, but am I doing pie in the sky stuff? Let's have a look. Just need to get rid of this guy. Where do you move your queen? Anywhere. Anywhere? Can't. Uh, that's Anywhere. not a square. That you, know, you don't believe away. it. You don't believe my right, attack. Yeah. Okay, you're a pawn grab. Yeah, of course. Queen well, C7. Okay, when I'm coming oh, in, when you're coming into I'm coming E5. In, I'm coming in with my guns blazing, and I'm gonna just come straight towards your king. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit scary, don't you think? Is it a little bit? I don't know how scary, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, might okay, I, I think I have to give up. Oh. I have to give up the um, rookie eight. Is no, 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 I no? think okay. I have to take on take on C4. C4. And now, can I play the magical? Knight g4. Yeah, then I'm gonna go knight d3. Oh, that's a good knight. A bit like last night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good night. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that stops everything. <laughs> My queen on b1 looks stupid. So I can't do that. What if I take here? Let's take something. Why not? Why, yeah, why still not? knight d3. And then can I go. Oh, hang on, wait, I should go. Oh, bishop takes bishop. Bishop takes bishop first. But do I have to take that one? Or can I take on. I take this one. This is getting a bit messy. It is messy because uh, you've got messy. rookie eight. Oh, rookie eight is. Rookie oh, eight. I didn't see that. It's no, nice you could actually. You know, you've gone better. Bishop queen takes h seven. Oh, oh, let's show it. So if I move my bishop, let's just say. But, but you have to move it. You have to move it uh, to b seven to say or d five. Okay, so if d five, yeah. Okay, so let's show finish. Oh, hang on, it doesn't work because of knight f eight. But we can do. We are we not mating? Eight. Wow, what is this position? Still rookie eight. Rookie eight. You have to take it. Queen takes h7. King to f8. And now that Trap. one is, is Yeah, is that nice. one's good. That's a good one. That's yeah. bound to happen, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Sort of here first. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you know, that's how Richard's going to get crushed. 
Well, D5, D5 is a move I'd want to yeah, play. Yeah, D5 is definitely the move you uh, want. And then we're going to get very, it'd be very interesting if we see that at the position. I mean, um, unbalanced. Yeah, definitely. Okay, should we go back to Hikaru? Because definitely, yep. it, it was looking very exciting when we last left um, on move 14, bishop to f2 just being played by Hikaru. And now, well, okay, taken here was dangerous, and black develops. And now, okay, white takes there. So the knight now finds this nice square where it's attacking. And I see the point of Hikaru's bishop f2. The point is now bishop g3, and we're trying to get rid of, of that important piece there. Well, also, the threat was uh, bishop f4. Bishop f4 was, was quite strong, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> rather than taking the pawn over here. <laughs> yeah, you I'll take the queen. I'll take the queen, thank you very much. And this is very interesting. It's funny, uh, Niels Grandelis, you know, you know, do you know what his brother does? No. He's got a brother who is similar age to him, and he's uh, one of the best climbers in Sweden. He's ranked, I think, number one climber, uh, one of the top climbers. And Niels was telling me in the Isle of Man, he was saying just the week before in the Isle of Man that his, uh, he was watching TV with his parents. And uh, on TV came this, uh, came this news alert that um, a bunch of climbers had been airlifted <laughs> off, a, off a mountain okay. in the helicopter because they got trapped up there for a couple of days. And he, and he said, oh, and they all said, oh, that would just be whatever his name is. They said it would be like, okay, his, his name's probably not Bob, but let's say Bob. Yeah. And it's just Bob again. And they were saying, oh, it happened, it's happened to him all the time. He's been airlifted off mountains all the time. And they didn't seem that concerned. I think they're quite a chilled family, which probably helps in this position. But um, quite cool to be like a, a world-class climber, I think. Yeah, that's a cool, cool thing to be. And this is Niels. You can see him there with his coffee and... Um, so yeah. Niels has a very wholesome philosophy, you know, before, yeah. before every game he, he makes the point of walking for one hour. Okay. So it was quite funny, you know, even yeah. in Reykjavik, when we played once in Reykjavik, yeah. he yes. was we there every, every day at lunchtime, him, Gawain Jones and some other, some other Danes. Yeah. They were walking, they could be seen walking around okay. Reykjavik for one hour. Wow. Okay, good stuff. And uh, well, it's a good way to get a bit of exercise and Cleanse the mind a bit, uh, yeah. I guess. Oh, it's mm -hmm. Eric Grandelius. Eric is, Grandelius. Is, is his brother. Okay. Great so surname. Great surname. It is. Grandelius. Grandelius. Sounds good when you're conquering mm -hmm. the mountains, doesn't it? It's yeah. appropriate. Um, but what's happening here, Yvanka? I mean, it, it, <coughs> now Hikaru is offering a pawn back in order to gain the H file for his attack. And if I was black here, I, I mean, I'd want to concentrate on the queen side rather than grabbing a pawn, but maybe grabbing a pawn is what black has to do. Do you think you have to grab the pawn? I wouldn't want to grab the pawn. Can I, I don't want to grab. I don't want to grab. No, I don't. But at the same time, can I get my king to safety? Can I just ignore everything and just castle? Yeah, or well, knight e5 is very interesting. Okay, knight e5, yeah. But I'm just wondering <coughs> if bishop b5 check is a possibility here. Uh, I'm wondering about mm. this move. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it works, but the idea of this check is, well, I, I, I displace the king, and if you take it, does, is this... How is this? You have to move your queen, probably. Somewhere, yeah. Queen somewhere, and now mm. my idea is to take here and try to use the pin. But it's quite risky for white to play this way, actually. I don't think I am winning this night. <coughs> well, you can always castle. You yeah, are piece uh, up. Yeah, this is not right. Bishop d5, so just first of all. So I like knight here because <laughs> I keep the threat of bishop takes b4 um, alive uh, in the position. So, um, what would Hikaru's idea be here? F4. Okay, F4. And now, can I take on B4? I mean, this is where it just goes, all, all hell breaks loose. Got my pawn yeah. back, and I'm attacking. Looks all right. Does look okay? Okay, so you can't go F4. And I, I would Oh, you have to move your queen or something. Uh, um, queen G5? Oh, I don't know. What about knight C5? Knight c5, I like that. That's a good idea. Uh, knight c5 and... Um, what a position already. Can I, can I sack a piece of black, take here, uh, and try to get... I want yeah, to go for it. Okay, let's, this is an Alice's. We pawn can takes. Pawn takes and just go away, I don't care. Take here. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. takes and now five. I go here and hope you move your rook. Go on, move your rook, Ivanka. Just do it for me. Rookie one? Um, no, 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 no. Go back, go back. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't. 
Because I, I, I'm thinking I can have some fun now. You're going to take care, aren't you, or something? No, I was thinking six. about the night B5. Oh, no. Night Is that B5. possible? What's been played, by the way? Uh, rook C8 has been played, so um, <coughs> it's another logical move, rook C8, isn't it? Or um, even night, yeah, night B5, I was thinking. Night B5. Poor. You can see how these positions can go wonky. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> with the idea of queen d7 check. And bishop, and bishop d6. Six. Yeah. Uh, and I don't. Don't. Yeah, it's just, just chaotic, isn't it? Okay, well, I mean, maybe we stick with the game because there's so yeah. many fascinating lines. And of course, rook c8 can't be a bad move because you're lining the rook up, another piece enters into the attack uh, I in the position. But, well, I mean, just what a game on ball one. Very, very exciting stuff here. And Niels is trying to do a Kasparov on Hikaru's position. Um, Rook C8. Rook C8, yeah. Good stuff. Well, if it was, if it was Kasparov playing, would you go king? Or has you can't defend the B4 pawn, can you? I know you, it doesn't need to be defended. It doesn't need to be defended so at the king moment. Could you just step, side king step B4, king B4? King B4, B1, B2, B2. B2 might be a bit safer. Okay, B2. Okay. Now. Just side step or. Side step away. Or is bishop. Uh, very difficult to get a handle on this kind of position, so... Totally, totally. It's a lot of calculation is needed and a very complex position. I mean, may, maybe now I, I'm thinking about e5 uh, in, in a position, but then knight f5... The bishop takes... Okay, maybe I can go here. So perhaps then it can't go king b2, maybe that's just a luxury I just don't have. Maybe yeah. I can go, have to go bishop c4. Okay, bishop c4 is, is normal. I can try knight b... No, I can't. So complex. Um, position really, really, really complex. Um, very hard for both sides to play. I mean, this is the kind of position where you need to spend a lot of time or be incredibly well prepared. Hikaru, one of the best count players in the world, but Niels is getting stronger all the time. Well, he thrives in these complications. You he know, he, he he actively admits to that. He says, "I love dynamic, complicated yeah. positions." Maybe now knight e5 is is correct. Yeah. Just to try to try to now. Get rid of that bishop. Well, some of us have yeah. palpitations getting into <laughs> this position. I think everyone does have palpitations. <laughs> <in this> position, <laughs> but I, I think that's the enjoyable part. You really? Know. Yeah. Mm. Well, maybe. I know where it's like spicy food. Well, why, why suffer? You suffer in spice, yeah. Why? Uh, you know? It's nice. It's nice to mm. nice to have a bit of spice occasionally. I think just you know burn your tongue a bit. <laughs> it's good good for the soul. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Uh, okay, it, it, it's just we're going to have to stay with this one a bit later. We yeah, we'll come back, back to it. We'll come back to it. It's great. So and. Uh, yeah.